Some of you guys are excellent singers and musicians, and you've been faithful to that church or that ministry or that group, and you're wondering, is it time for you to leave? And I'm here to tell you, listen, God gave you common sense. If they're not pouring back into you and investing into you, you've been faithful to them, and they're not been faithful to you, and they're not pouring back into you, it's time for you to leave unless God is telling you or instructing you to stay just a little bit longer, all right? But most times, they'll try to trick you into staying and tell you, hey, listen, you're not serving us, you're serving God. And yes, that's true. But listen, God always makes us a priority. That church, that ministry, that group should represent God's love to you. He makes you a priority, he puts you first place, and he lets you know that you are valuable too. I've seen singers who have been faithful. They come to choir rehearsal, they sing, they, they show up faithfully. And I've seen pastors invite that big, big time praise and worship singer or that big time gospel artist in. They will fly them in first class. They will put them in the nicest hotel. They will have Uber, uh, not the regular Uber. They'll give them the like the limo version. <laughs> they will bring them to the church, have them in backstage in, a, in the nice office with whatever they've asked for, food, drinks, even pay them top dollar. And their own praise and worship leader never get that same treatment. I've never shared this story with anyone. Uh, I think maybe one person that's my wife. So uh, maybe comment below if you've experienced something like this or, um, or you've gone through a situation like this. So I started playing when I was around 12 or 13 uh, in a holiness type church, a Pentecostal church. And churches like that really welcome, you know, young musicians to come up, play and, you know, try to learn. Even if you can't play that great, uh, most times they're very flexible and, and very willing to let you experiment and, you know, kind of get up there in a company. So uh, I was 12 or 13 when I started. Around 14, we had this new pastor come in and he uh, was really excited about getting the ministry up and running and we end up moving to this really, really big church. He had this great vision to grow the ministry. So I'm playing one Sunday morning, okay? And I'm playing and you know, service is going on and this gentleman taps me on the shoulder in the middle of me playing this song and he whispers to me, he's like, hey, your pastor wants me to help out. And I'm thinking to myself, my pastor, the pastor wants you to help out. What, what do you mean? So then he says, yeah, do you mind uh, sliding over? I'm gonna, I can take over from here. And I remember sliding over as he asked me to. And I remember uh, walking to the back of the church, fighting back the tears, man. And uh, honestly, man, it just hurt me to my core because I was trying to figure out where is this coming from? There was no warning. I didn't know there, there was gonna be another musician replacing me. I remember, man, that instant back there crying. I didn't know what to do. Um, but something supernatural took place. For me, I, you know, I, I believe in God. I believe God gave me a supernatural strength and uh, a quickening. And so what I did was within five minutes, I dried my tears up. I went back out into the sanctuary and I went over to the piano. And we had a little piano on the other side of the church. And I just lifted up the, I remember lifting up the, the little cover of the keys and just kind of tinkering away and just trying to find my way. And uh, I never shared this story with anyone. I never let anyone see the pain and the hurt and the, the sense of betrayal that I experienced, man. But um, there was just some supernatural, I don't know what to call it, man, but God gave me a supernatural strength and said, keep going, keep going, keep pressing. And so what I would do, Sunday after Sunday, I would bring a little tape recorder. This is back in the days of tape recording. And I would take a tape recorder, put it by the organ where he played. And I would press record and record the service. And that Sunday night, I would go back and listen to the different nuances and different things that he played. Uh, because see, when I play, you know, people kind of got into it, but I'll never forget, man, when he slid me off the organ, <laughs> he tapped me on the shoulder. I'll never forget the mothers just had a little bit more pep and they clap and people started getting into it. And, I, and of course that hurt me. But I don't know, there was something within me that said, man, grow, grow, expand. And so what I would do, like I say, I would record Sunday after Sunday and I would go home and practice. I would push play, find that chord, rewind it back. Some of you musicians, you know what this is all about. You try to match what you hear, <laughs> then you rewind it back. You play that chord again, you rewind it back. Um, but it was a growing experience for me. But I promised myself, eventually I would share this story um, to help someone else who may have experienced uh, someone tapping you on the shoulder or you being replaced without any warning. I say this from the bottom of my heart. I highly encourage you to make sure that you cover your bases, that you, you don't go in and take over, but you make sure you go in with a, a sense of peace, a sense of positivity, and you make sure that you're cultivating a team effort, not uh, replacing anyone, 
um, without it being done in decency and in order. I mean, you know what it's like being replaced. Uh, if you've never experienced it, it's a very hurtful, very embarrassing, shameful thing. And uh, I just recommend you guys do the right thing. I love you guys so much. You know, I, I never like to close out any video without letting you guys know that today is a new day. It's a new life and a new opportunity for you to become a better you. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video.